Awakens the dog in him. Solo leveling episode 4 overview and cut content from Mr. Ace Lock. Let's see what he has to say. God damn, the voice acting already. This was awesome. This was gruesome, this was impactful, and this was epic. After a bit of a setback in episode 3, episode 4 comes around and delivers peak shonen, plain and simple. Setback in episode 3? Well, I guess it was kind of like a little bit slow, huh? A little bit of uh, exposition, kind of uh, not like the other episodes where it was like a lot of action. Comes around and delivers peak shonen, plain and simple. The stakes are high, the pacing is great, and the mm -hmm. payoff is so satisfying. As the true nature of the series starts to unveil itself, Oh baby, as we're always, leveling. We're going to be reviewing the episode as well as compare it to the manhwa and see what okay. changes the studio implemented and whether they deliver or not. Yo, I feel like we might have found a new any news type of video where they actually explain the cut content. I love stuff like this. Please, Mr. Aesok, deliver. The episode covers chapters 13 to 17, which in the manhwa they serve the purpose of introducing the level and system Song is dealing with. Okay. However, A1 Pictures took this simple premise and elevated it 10 times. How? I love these anime exclusive shots that sent shivers down my spine as Song was screaming his lungs out. Did he actually break the snake with his bare hands in the light novel too? Sorry, in the, in the manhwa? Fine, as Song was screaming his lungs out. But let's start from the top. The episode picks up straight from the previous with the Iron Toothed Wolf fight. Ooh, and I gotta scary. say, this is where A1 Pictures really dropped the ball for me. The design Why? of these wolves was just... I don't know. Actually, compared to what he showed me in the webtoon just now, we saw like a frame of a lichen right there. It looked pretty thick compared to the anime. They completely stripped. Yeah. I mean, do I really care about them, you know, making this red lichen not as intimidating as a webtoon? At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Sure, I would have liked it to be bigger and more menacing like that, but in like an episode or two, no one's going to remember this dog, so who cares, right? Them from the intimidating aura they had in the manhwa. Just take a look at the design. It does look here. a lot more menacing, though. It looks big and beefy. It, it looks does. very menacing, especially with the shadowy shading, but also the details in its facial expressions. Instead, we got whatever this is. It honestly looks like a rabbit dog. Eh, it doesn't look too bad, but I definitely see what he's saying if you compare it to the webtoon. Dog with elongated legs. They look like any generic first monster in anime waiting to be slain. While but it is though, isn't it? It is a generic first monster in anime just waiting to be slain, just like the goblins. In the manhwa, defeating just one felt like a huge achievement. Especially okay, okay, I see the point. Like in the webtoon, it was a lot more impactful because it was a lot more threatening, right? So maybe this one was a little bit cheaper. Maybe the cliffhanger in episode 3 wouldn't have been so jarring if this red steel lichen was actually threatening. Because at episode 3 ending, I was like, really? This, this red dog? Really? Is he that scary? All right. For the weak song. And even during the fights, they completely Whoa. lost their dangerous feeling they had, which is something I really did not appreciate. What I appreciated, however, is the animation, which was amazing, despite the- <laughs> Look at him just beat the shit out of this animation, dog. <laughs> which boom, was boom, amazing, boom. despite the lackluster choreography. Compared to the manhwa, the fights didn't really held off, only the hmm. animation was good. But since these wolves were the only bad thing about the episode, I am it's honestly not too big fine, deal. since these were just fights meant to explain how the leveling system works. Exactly. And also show us how much Song leveled up his physique through the daily quests, which I gotta say, the anime did an amazing job in explaining. <laughs> the fucking muscle physique that he built, but every time he levels up, dude, he gets like a base stat, plus one on every stat too, as right? As well as staying true to the original source. He never equipped that title, by the way. The Wolf Assassin. I understand it only works on, like, the Rantotropes. Oh, sorry. Like, the Beastmen or something. But he never wore it. And he Wonder if he wore it before going into Kasuka fight. It would have made a difference. It's a snake, though. Does a snake even count as that? I doubt it does. Here, the beauty of solo leveling unveils itself. And this is what all the hype is about. The well, progression. to the insane fights, of course, this leveling system is probably one of the best power systems I have ever experienced. Which is funny. Because, like, I see, like, a lot of criticism being made about um, how everyone's just glazing this show. And everyone's like, oh my god, it's all, like, so cool. It's doing something no anime's ever done before. And it's like, what? A, a leveling system? You have some stats? Yeah? You fight monsters? You get EXP? You level up in a game UI panel? Click stats? You know, like Maple Story? Skill up? I mean, I... I feel like this is not a unique concept, you know? This has been done in many, many different shows. It's just 
the way that he gets the levels, the way that he was even introduced to the system, it felt like such a trial. So it feels a lot more worth it. But I'm not going to act like this leveling system is like the most unique crazy shit that i've never seen because it's like what it's a fucking level up menu that every isekai character pretty much has the idea of laying down every stat and you know what though i i can't even say this i i can't even say that like the job class is unique right because hasn't this been done and also shield hero i swear to god shield hero also does the same shit except it's not the same leveling system but the interface and everything it's kind of similar you know of laying down every stat and every ability I, I do like the fact that we have five distinct stats and they all seem to have their own specific things, right? Even perception was shown in the end of the episode by detecting like the monster aura or whatever it was. The protagonist has to the viewers makes for a very fun but more importantly consistent storytelling. This honestly feels like watching a game character in a shonen setting, which yeah. I understand has been done before. But, and this is a big... Oh, <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Before. But, but, but what? But, and this is a big one. Here okay. it's done right. Every power or every ability song gets, it feels earned. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Training results push in a direct visible stat increase. So I guess the whole justification of why the system is good is again, the way that he acquires the power. Everything else feels a little bit like the characters are just given all their powers immediately to them while he has to suffer and go through these trials to really earn it. Seeds for future abilities or events can be hidden in plain sight. And so actually following his journey is far more interesting. But honestly, yeah. the best thing about this is there are no ass poles in solo leveling, which is the bane of Really? There's, there's no ass poles at all? No single plot hole at all? Are we glazing a little bit too much or is this actually true? We'll have to we'll have to see in the future episodes to see if he's true. Shown an anime. As I said, everything feels earned as Song levels up. But on that note, we get back to the episode, where we see Song fighting different types of magical beasts, which all have the theme of animals. But actually, a good chunk of this fight was cut off, and for a good reason, as it was only to show how much Song Just the levels. Up, which yeah. in the anime was summarized in few monologues as he was fighting. And this is what I love about how fast-paced this episode was. Bro is surfing on the snake. Without leaving any important details. A detail like the fact that the beast's name color indicates... Alright, orange is like, you're pretty much on the same level, you can probably defeat it. White is like, pretty weak. And then red is like, don't fuck around. The fact that the beast's name color indicates the threat level of said beast. And this is a cool wink wink nudge nudge to the fact that hunters usually can't tell the level of the magical beast they fight. Oh, Well... Yeah! Because they they're not a player. They're not part of the system. So they... Huh. So I... Like, just understanding... Like, if you're in a game and you go to a new map and you're not aware of your strength and you're pretty new, seeing monsters, it's a little bit scary because it's like, can you fight them? Like, if there's actual consequences with dying, it's I wouldn't be fucking around. So not being able to tell if these monsters are your, in your, like, um, in your range to defeat, that is, that is definitely a setback which was explored in the first episode. What was explored in this one, however, was Song's ability to feel the threat level of the beasts without even encountering them. But not just perception? that, he can also feel if the beast is the boss of the dungeon. And yeah, perception. Here we find Song is in a dilemma. He can clearly tell that the boss is way too powerful, but at the same time, he has gotten way too strong, and the other beasts can no longer level him up upon defeat. <laughs> in fact, all he is doing is damaging the sword he had. But here, we gotta take it but back a notch and talk about something very crucial which actually the enemy completely skipped. Oh? I'm talking about how badass Song looked during these fights in the manhwa. While Damn, he, he already does look like Mr. K-pop idol here, huh? Especially this middle frame. Left middle frame. This definitely is the episode or the chapter where, or the arc, where he's definitely changing. Because so far, I've been being very schizo saying, oh my god, when is he changing? You know, is he fucking getting bigger yet? Is he getting handsomer yet? What's going on? I feel like there's a distinct moment where his voice fucking changed. His muscles are showing better. The way that he's like, um, even thinking about other things are changing. Even the way that he was like, criti not criticizing, but coolly, or calmly observing like the the E ranks at the end, you know, before he saved them. Everything about that, I felt like last episode, episode four was like the turning point for when he turn changes into this uh, Sung Drip Woo that hasn't happened yet. 
while in the anime he still looked his old self, albeit stronger. And I gotta admit, while watching the episode, I was really mad and irritated at the fact that they did not give us those cold, badass looks. However, to my surprise, we I got one look for this. They were holding off on those. Yeah, we, we got this one look, right? So when he does go badass mode against the boss, it feels much more so like, go badass mode against what? the boss. What is this? It's, I, I get it, it's just a depiction of his power, his aura, but does it actually mean something? It, does this activate when he starts getting stronger? What is it doing? I don't know. Does it matter? Boss, I don't know. It feels much more earned for him and more satisfying for us. Which I think was a genius move by A1 Pictures and took the amazing battle we saw in the manhwa to a new height. But before we carry on, however, I am happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Anime Express. Y'all know what to do. Please use the discount code ACELOCK for your first purchase off of Anime Express. And now back to Song, who gathers his courage and decides to head down towards the strong aura of the boss. And immediately after stepping into its lair, he gets attacked with a very Boom. fast melee strike. Yo, the, the camera work here was pretty cool. I don't know, something about this, the, the, the pivot of the angle. I don't know, something about that felt very unnatural in a good way. Strike. Like, boom. Song managed to block it with a magical sword. Yeah, that, that right there, right there. But it was way too much powerful for that, and it broke. There, the boss reveals itself. A huge magical serpent with daggers for fangs and an armor-like... Wait, it had daggers for fangs? ...with daggers... Oh, pretty much is. God damn. Holy shit. The top teeth, at least. For fangs and an armor like scales throughout its enormous body. And that we fucking crush with their bare hands. We pretty much wasted this entire fight fucking around with Mr. Kim's bat, like a uh, broken sword. Because, like, I'm sure you guys know if you play games, like, if you get your durability of a weapon broken or something, or if it's, like, really low, you don't even do damage anymore. So, for, like, the first, like, half of the fight, or at least until he started using his bare hands, he was just wasting time he was just like getting beat up and getting fucked up for no reason he's like why isn't it working and he's like oh i'm fucking strong <laughs> let me just use my hands to just fucking grip this thing and just shatter it and i gotta say in total contrast to the wolves they gave us a very good looking boss yes and trust me song felt that not cgi either this could have been cgi every moment of this could have been cgi but it wasn't, thank god that too as he immediately deducted that his sword cannot pierce through those scales but also, it's frustrating for him, after all the leveling up he did, and him thinking he got on strong, its name is still orange. Even though this means that it is within Song's Same reach, range. without any means of breaking the scales, he can't even deal damage to it. On the other hand, the way- Just use your bare hands, dummy. The way the snake throws its insanely huge body, and the speed at which it does, made it very clear. If any hit connects directly, it's pretty much GG's for Song. And the poor guy- if any hit connects, I feel like he's gotten many different hits here. Am I crazy? Did he block that? I, I mean, did he really block this? Like, look at this. He's just getting fucked here. And this Boom! That's which it does. Boom! Very clear. I feel like that just means his durability has gone up too. I'm not sure what durability stat kind of aligns with. Vitality. It's got to be vitality, right? It's just HP. If any hit connects directly, it's pretty much GG's for song. And the poor guy got his ass handed to him as he Ooh. was barely avoided Ooh. death his strikes. Which, I gotta say, in the anime it looked far better due to the animation. But also, up until now we are yet to see any badass look from Song, and so mm. his suffering was far more believable. There, amidst all the chaos and running for his life, it hit him. Song is sick and tired of being weak. That was a good speech, right? He got a whole entire flashback and he just kind of starts talking about how he's so fucking tired of being looked down upon the weakest hunter and whatnot like enough of that bullshit sick and tired of being weak he has been the laughing stock of the other hunters for way too long he remembers the giant statues and their terror but this flashback took his thoughts into a different road right because usually whenever juhi remembers a statue she just like frightens up and like freezes because it's like ptsd but whenever sung jim Mu thinks about the statue he's like oh i remember that terror this snake right now this is nothing compared to it. It's kind of interesting, though, the parallels between these two characters and how they're kind of just pretty much... One is, like, thriving and the other is just, like, shrinking in fear. The giant statues and their terror. But this flashback took his thoughts into a different road. Compared to the statues, this thing is nothing. And there, after receiving a direct hit... I think that's one of my favorite tropes in these, like, shonen elements of a show where your main character is someone's, like, fighting and they're kind of losing, but they think about, like, a like a test, a trial they had before that was even harder, something, an opponent that was so much stronger 
that you were already exposed to. So you compare that and then suddenly you're like, no, I can overcome this. I, I enjoy that mindset a lot. Something died in him and from the ashes he's reborn. The strength hungry song, aka him, is born. <laughs> strength hungry song, get it? Ha ha ha, because he's putting it onto strength. Anyways, what is that aura? What is that aura? I don't know. He's just glowing. Purple, bluish. Does that matter? Does that indicate that he's powering up? Does that indicate that he's limit broken? I don't fucking know. It didn't really show us anything. Maybe it's just like a visual, like a, a cool visual indicator that doesn't really mean much. It's just to say, oh, look, he's about to go to the next level. As I said, saving the badass look for the boss fights was such a major thing done through a very simple change. Here, it really felt earned as he prepares himself for the final attack. And for this man, I gotta hand it to A1 Pictures. This really captured the frustration turned anger that Song felt. But also, yes. I gotta hand it to the voice actor of Song, who- You can like, feel the rage, the anger, the frustrations coming out of this voice actor. Whenever you listen to him, it's like, bro, it's pretty much as voice acting like his rent is due. He, every episode, he's putting on a fucking masterclass. It just sounds like he's just going all out in the studio booth. And all his coworkers are probably like, Holy shit, this guy takes this way too seriously, okay, which is great. Is insane multi-layered performance from when Sung was feeling weak and getting frustrated to him getting irritated to a full-on Eren Yeager style of rage. And there, Sung's insanely daily training showed its results. Yes, we never needed the fucking sword because it was broken, the durability was down, so we were doing nothing with it. But turns out, our grip strength is fucking... We got that gorilla grip. Shattered the snake's fucking shells with our the, the scales with our hands. We just defeated this barehanded. As even though the magical sword can pierce through the scales, like I feel like we could have just fucking used our hands and like pierced through like that. You know, I feel like a a little poke like that would have been like enough to penetrate compared to the sword because it's broken. It was brute force that did. Much like he felt when facing the giant statues, brute force stands above it all, and Song was literally crushing the throat of the poor snake. And even after taking many hits and bleeding so much, he still- Oh yeah, that was a scene where he ran into the pillar and he got like a little nosebleed. I don't know. Something about that little nosebleed was a little bit off. I don't know. It's just me because look at this. Snake. And even after he runs into this pillar and I thought the impact would give him a little bit more of like a little nosebleed. After taking many hits. It's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's just a, this small amount of blood. I, I guess there was a little bit more here, right? Look, 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 look. I, there is a little bit more here, right? There's a little bit more here, but... And bleeding so much. I don't know. It's like a very small detail, but I thought that I was like, oh, that's a really tiny nosebleed. I guess he's just that much stronger and durable. Much. He still did not waver. Years of pent-up aggression within his soul are lashing out as Song delivers the final push and crushes the neck of the magical beast. This whole sequence of the actual death is an anime exclusive, as oh? in the manhwa the actual death happened off-screen, while A1 Pictures treated us with an amazing scene. They went beyond the call of duty to deliver. Webtoon elitists are fucking crying, saying, No, I can't say that the Webtoon did it better. After the fight, Song is there smiling. He is no longer weak. His strength is earned. He levels up three levels and up to 18. But more important... King of the Swamp! He obtained a new magic weapon. Yes! Yo, look at this shit. Look at this shit. Look at this knife. I think it has some like corrosive like poison abilities too, right? Made from the snake's fang. It has much, much more durability. C rank weapon acquisition difficulty. So <clears throat> I thought that the rank, the acquisition difficulty was like an indicator of like, you need to be this rank or at least near this range to like equip the weapon. But it's more like how hard was it to equip it? Now, maybe it, there is some kind of gear check. Like, you know, in games, you can't just like wear end game weapons as soon as you're level one. But I don't know. I thought that was pretty interesting. Interesting that it's only still C rank though, right? Because like, what's like a B rank weapon? What's an A rank weapon? What's an S rank weapon? What's a national level weapon? Ability and double the magical power of the sword song got from Kim in the second episode. And also, in a very game-like, it can inflict two debuffs, which are paralysis and bleed. Dude, that minus 1% HP per one second is insane. And you can feel how this is such a milestone for Song, as before he was struggling with getting good weapons, and this dagger completely removed yes. the issue. And now for the Don't forget about the gold that we earned by farming those goblins and the lichens too, right? Like, I wonder... How that gold translates into the currency in this year. Final sequence of the giant stone statue. This was an extra just cherry on the top. To be honest, the snake fight, yeah, it was pretty much the main meat of the show. But 
to me, a power fantasy is only as true as the other people witnessing it. And because no one witnessed the fight against the snake, it's not that big of a deal. Now, if, if Sung Jin Woo was ba ba battling that snake and the entire fucking, I don't know, the, the people of Korea was fucking watching it. They're like, oh my God, you know, maybe, maybe that would have been different. But I enjoy it whenever other people are around and they are there to kind of witness the, the power fantasy at this place. So this end scene, I think, was my favorite part of the episode. That the, the E and D rank on this shit was hilarious though. <laughs> Where's the DPS? Where are my fucking damage dealers, dude? They're on the ground, just fucking dead, useless There's DPS. Fighting. There were some changes here, like in the manhwa, Song actually took down the statue with that one hit, while oh. in the anime, he only broke its defense, allowing the hunters to kill it. My headcanon still is that. Well, I mean, if the webtoon fucking did it in the other way, he in, in the webtoon, he pretty much just destroyed it in one blow. But in, in the anime, it made it look like this party was pretty much almost there. It's just not there yet. So Jinmu just throws the sword and it's like, does it just pushes it over the edge to secure the kill. But I'd like to think they weren't doing shit. Their damage dealers are down. The tank is barely holding on for his life. The monster has like, I don't know, 90% HP left. So Jinmu shows up, throws that fucking sword, just destroys his HP. Maybe it goes down to like 5% and then, then they take it over. That's my head cannon. I mean, he only broke its defense, allowing the hunters to kill it. Which is weird, why did they do that? I don't but know. But after this awesome- <laughs> I love how they keep focusing on his, like, his forearms. Look at those muscles. Some episode, I'll give them the benefits of the doubt. But hey, they gave us a very cool scene of yes. Song throwing the sword. That this one was so Miniota's cool. This throw in the second episode of Nanatsu no Taizai. Spoilers, one of spoilers, spoilers. most spoilers. successful anime ever. And honestly, it was such a cool- Guys, are we ever gonna watch that? Are we ever gonna watch Seven Deadly Sins? Why aren't you commenting Seven Deadly Sins in the videos when I ask for new reactions to watch? Easter egg. But hey, if you wanna talk about cool, check my boy Song here. How his hand looks beefy. <laughs> Ayo. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Ace Law? You like them forearms? How his hand. <laughs> Bro's definitely right handed. Looks beefy. And also, if you notice, his yeah. voice is becoming deeper. So that's the thing. In the fight against the snake, there was a moment where his pitch of the voice dropped. But even before then, there were moments in the last episode where I thought his voice was deeper. But technically, it's because he wasn't screaming compared to the previous two episodes. So he was kind of more chilling. It's like his morning voice like me right now. So I don't know, but he is definitely changing. This is such a subtle thing that I did not know I wanted. And Juhi! Everyone was like, what happened? Who did this? Sung Jimu just walks into the shadows. <laughs> Ju he saw that. That's right. She saw that shit. But, but I'm really glad I want Or at least she has an idea of could it be, you know, Jinwoo that did that, you know? Just gave us this. And honestly, it works as the perfect point to close off our review of episode four. Yes, thank God. No spoilers. Sorry, no cliffhangers either. This is a great video. Guys, please give Mr. Ace Lock uh, a like on his video. Here it is. Here's the link. Subscribe to his channel. Like this video if you did. I really enjoy any type of cut content that's you know not in the anime of the series we're watching right now so this is this is great man this is this is actually great the korean names are a bit confusing it is what it is man